welcome to another video by Geordie Shed and State Goods are making this hydrogen generator. Let's get started. First of all, I started with the plates. These were made from scrap sheet tin that I had and they're one millimetre thick each. They'll be cut to uh, a square size uh, later on in the video. So first of all, I clamped the sheets in the vise to cut out the tabs in the top of each of the plates. These are so I can easily connect the plates together later on to make the actual plate assembly. I began by using the angle grinder. However, for the other horizontal cut, I used the hacksaw because the angle grinder tends to catch the plates and bend them. So as you can see now, it uh, bent the plate. So this can be reduced by mounting the plates lower down in the vise. Um, however, I, when you can't do that, I had to use the hacksaw to um, make sure not to bend the plates. So now you can see me using the hacksaw to cut the um, the other way to produce the tab. The hacksaw I used at this point was really blunt, so that's why it took quite a while to get through. It would be a lot faster with a sharp hacksaw blade. So now I'm just ensuring that the uh, cuts join together so the excess material can easily be removed because they didn't quite join up. So now the uh, extra bit can be removed leaving us with our nice tabs on the top of each of the plates. So then I used a file to smooth out the cut and remove the rough edges on the side of the plates. This makes them a lot easier to work with and it also makes them look a lot nicer. So now we can see how the tabs will alternate in each of the cells allowing the positives and negatives to be easily connected to each other. Next I began drilling the holes in the plates to allow them to be connected together. I started with a smaller drill which is more accurate and makes the later larger hole easier to drill. So now we can see me drilling the larger hole through the plates. This is a 5mm drill bit as I will be using an M4 bolt later on to connect them together. Ideally you'd want probably about a 4.5mm drill bit although I didn't have this. So now we can see all the nice tabs with the holes in ready to be connected. So now I'm 3D printing a bracket to hold the plates together. This was much easier than building a complex frame to hold them together. And since I had a 3D printer, I thought I might as well use it. So these plates were printed using blue PLA, as you can see. And uh, they took about two minutes each to complete, which was uh, fairly quickly.
So now I've printed the bracket so I can begin building the plate assembly. So there are all the plates that you saw me uh, cut earlier and you can see they're now all the same rectangular size to fit in the container I'm going to use. So now I can slot these into the bracket and uh, it's quite a tight fit for most of them so they don't obviously fall out. So I, especially for the later brackets I have to use the hammer to hammer them in. So the way these plates and cells will be laid out is that there are six cells and uh, the supply will be 12 volts. So this means that each cell will get approximately 2 volts each which is about right for hydrogen generation. So you can see how the tabs in each cell, so as you can see now that's one cell, you've got a positive and negative terminal and then each on each cell the positive terminal connects to the negative terminal of the next cell. So that means we have two tabs that are next to each other so we can easily bolt through. So this is a series circuit and is why the 12 volts gets split down into 2 volts because we've got 6 cells. So there you can see me slotting in the rest of the brackets. So the brackets on the opposite side can now be added and I have to use a hammer to hammer these in because as I said they are a quite tight fit. So the spacings that I use for this cell I wasn't really sure uh, what spacings to use so I decided to use a 3mm spacing between the two plates of each cell and then a 5mm spacing between each of the cells. This looked about right but we'll see when we test it out in the next video. If you don't have a 3D printer, you could probably quite easily cut these out of um, some other non-conductive material. So you could probably use wood or plastic. Or some other designs that I looked at um, use a nylon thread that goes through all of the cells. And then you can use bolts to connect all the cells together, which is probably a better method than what I did. But I didn't have any nylon bolts, so this is why I use this method. So now we can see the spacers being printed. Again, these were printed in blue PLA plastic, and these took about a minute to complete each. So now I can begin attaching the cells together. These, um, so the spacers are five millimeters thick, which is the spacing between each of the cells. And then the M4 bolt goes through one of the plates, through the spacer, and then through the other cell and then finished off with a M4 nut. So this, is, this attaches the cells in the series circuit which we want. So this is quite fiddly to do and I found it easiest to use a pair of needle nose pliers to hold um, the spacer and the nut in place while I screwed it together with a screwdriver. If you had a lot more M4 nuts then you could use a couple of M4 nuts um, between the cells as the proper spacing. But I only had enough M4 nuts um, to do it like this so I had to print the uh, individual spacers. So there you can see the, two, the first two cells being connected together. So now exactly the same procedure is done for the rest of the cells. So the M4 bolts that I used were a bit long so I had to cut them down and a really good method for cutting M4 bolts down is to put the nut on first then cut it and then when you remove the nut it re-taps the threads so you can screw it in properly and the end thread won't get mashed which is uh, really good because when you cut them without the nut on they're really hard to get back in a nut because the end of the thread where you cut them is a bit bent 
So to attach the bolts in the middle of the uh, generator, you can slide the outer cells down a bit through the brackets so you can easily get to the hole and attach them together. So you can see now the generator is really starting to come together and look the part. So the screwdriver I had, as you can see, actually fit through the uh, 5mm hole. So this made it quite easy to push the screwdriver through and then uh, tighten up the nut and the bolt. So as you can see now, uh, the you can see how they're all attached together in series um, using the alternate polarities and uh, matching up the tabs to be able to connect them together. So the, where the generator actually attaches to the power is the end two plates. So now we can see me using a multimeter set to continuity mode to check all of the cells in um, that they connected. So this makes sure that all of the bolts have got good contact and that um, the generator will be conductive. So this will save any troubleshooting later on so I know where the problem is because I know the actual plate assembly is working. So now we could just see me bend the end tabs uh, parallel to the lid so this makes it easier to connect it to the lid. So now I'm drilling uh, the holes through the lid so again these are five millimeter holes for an M4 bolt and there's me drilling the other side And then now, um, I'd used up all my M4 bolts, so I had to use wing nuts. So I put one wing nut on first, then push it through the lid, and then put another wing nut on the other side to fix it to the lid tightly. So these are like our mounting points for the generator. So I repeat the exact same process for the other side. So these bolts coming out the lid are our positive and negative terminals where the generator will connect to. So now I'm just checking to make sure that the plate assembly will fit on those two bolts, which they thankfully do. So now I add another nut onto the bolt to offset the plate assembly from the lid so there's a bit of a gap. And to attach the generator I've got to remove the end plate and bend the tab flat again um, so I can get the wing nut on because obviously a wing nut's quite wide. If you were using just a standard M4 nut you probably wouldn't have to do this. So there's one plate being attached and then I do exactly the same for the other side using another wing nut to uh, make sure it's an equal spacing from the lid and then attach the plate to the bolt using another wing nut on the opposite side. So now the two plates are connected I can simply slide the generator back down on the plates through the brackets. This is a little bit fiddly but I got it done. <laughs> so you can now see how the plates are mounted to the lid. So now the hydrogen generator is almost complete. So there you can see the uh, hydrogen uh, generator being mostly assembled. Obviously one of the final steps is to be able to get the hydrogen out. We need uh, an outtake valve. So I'm drilling a hole in the top of the lid to fit a bicycle uh, valve in there. 
So the biggest drill I had was a 10 millimeter drill bit, but this isn't a, isn't big enough for the bike valve. So as you can see, I've got to use a knife to enlarge the hole. So then I remove the lid and push the bike valve through the hole. And then using a pair of pliers, I can pull this through the hole and the rubber on the bicycle valve ensures a tight, airtight seal with the lid. So some of the plates uh, moved a bit and came out of the brackets. So as you can see here, I'm just uh, reattaching the brackets to make sure that all the plates are exactly where they need to be. So bicycle valves are a one-way valve so they only let air in. So what I need to do is remove the internal uh, internal valve to make sure that air can get, well hydrogen can get out but not back in. So now this is removed it's basically just a hollow tube that allows the hydrogen to come out of the hydrogen reactor. So now we can screw the lid uh, back on once I make sure all the plates are parallel. So now I can screw it together and that is our completed hydrogen generator. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video of making a hydrogen generator then please like and make sure to subscribe to make sure you don't miss the video of testing this out. Thanks for watching. Bye.